Hi, David Bizard here, and you are watching Power Attack 10. This is episode 66, and it's something of a bolt out of the blue, so to speak. It was prompted by the fact that I had a little mystery, a small one, crop up today. And, and I thought, you know, during my career, I've had some things that have looked a bit mysterious. Some we solved, some we didn't. So I'm going to tell you about those. I'm having a really hard time deciding what to call this episode. I guess it's really about failures in the first instance and the attempt to solve the problems that those failures entailed. Yes, I have failures. In fact, I've had a bunch of failures. And let me tell you something. If you are a deep thinker and you, at, you wish to analyze results, one of the things that you will find is that you learn more from a failure than you do having it work to your satisfaction. Why? Well, if it works to your satisfaction, that's where you typically stop. If it fails to work to your satisfaction, you've learned what not to do, and you go ahead, if you're a real determined soul, you go ahead and find the fix. Well, I'm going to tell you a story about failures and fixes. Let me go back to the early days of me modifying engines, right? In about 1966-ish, I teamed up with my now lifelong friend Mike Lane and we formed a race engine company. Now, Mike was an electronics engineer and you'll see him in the uh, uh, videos of the uh, university lecture I'm put posting up there. But the thing is, is that um, uh, we battled these problems together. Now, my first problem that I had, uh, or at least the first problem I had that warrants getting into this program, concerns an engine build that we were doing for a guy who got an adequate checkbook. In other words, he wanted a race winning engine so we built him one right we the budget included all brand new parts wherever we needed them right i spent a lot of time on the flow bench trying to get more airflow than normal out of it was a mini engine by the way um, and we built him this um, uh, 1293 the class limit was 1300 this 1293 hill climb car engine for it was for a mini anyway uh we pulled all the stumps out right to say that it was expensive was not uh a factor here we worked far longer on it than we charged for right because this guy allowed us to do still make a living doing research work and perfecting on his engine well, we got this engine together and we got it on the engine dyno and lo and behold, it was 20 horsepower down on what it should have been, which that wasn't good. So the first thing I did was change the camshaft because British Leyland were notorious for not growing, having the cams ground very well. Uh, they didn't do them, they subcontracted to an outside company. And um, uh, so I changed the camshaft, right? Not that I hadn't checked the one that was in there. I checked this one, it, uh, well, we went down and got some cams, then checked three or four of them, then put in what we thought would be the best, right? Um, few days later we made some more pulls didn't make any difference to the power right so I got one of the cylinder heads out of stock and put that on and I knew it wasn't quite as good as the one that was on there made some pulls just the same in power right so 
after doing quite a few tests like this, we changed carburetors, manifolds, you name it, distributors. We decided a new engine. So we started from scratch and built this new engine. Broke it in on the dyno. Of course, we built several engines like this, so we knew all the jetting timing and everything, right? The first pull, it made the requisite horsepower. And although we messed with it for several hours more, we only sucked about three horsepower more out of it, right? Sold him the engine, and he would have won the championship, except he got married that year, and they had a two-week honeymoon, and he missed two races, and lost the championship by about three points. I mean, it, the guy that won it had a thousand and something, and he was about three points less. And I told him, I said, but you need to get your priorities right. You'd have been champion, right? You pretty much won every race bar, what, two last year? And there's no reason to suppose you'd have been any lower than I said, even if you came fifth, you'd have won the championship. You've never been down that far. Anyway, that's it. Now, we subsequently used all the parts out of that engine that didn't work. We used a camshaft, intake manifold, carburetor, crankshaft, block, etc. In fact, I used a block, block in my engine. Right? And guess what? Everyone came up to spec on the dyno. So we never even find out what is 20 horsepower less. It would have been nice to solve that problem, but we never did, right? So we just live with the fact that it's a problem. Now let me move on to problem number two. This ironically was with the same customer. This is the way it goes for the next season for our erstwhile 1300 mini driver who nearly won the championship. Next year he's very eager to sweep the board. So he asks Mike and I what we can do for an ultimate engine. Could, like could we do a supercharged engine? He would move up a class which was probably less competitive because it was up to two liters and there was more people in the under two liter class. But he felt sure that we could build him a blown engine that would win every race that year. And uh, so we agreed to do so and we found a suitable Judson supercharger, uh, which would pretty well match what we wanted to do. Not the best of superchargers, but we went through it and detailed it out and just made it a little bit better than it was. And um, anyway, the plan was we would build him a 1400 supercharged Mini, which meant that it now ran in the 1300 to 2 litre class, right? It's actually 13, it was just under 1400, right? Um, that you had to give away a certain percentage of your capacity if you added a blower to it. Well, we built this engine and it wasn't cheap. We did everything we could to it. And uh, first meeting was coming up and we really didn't have time to get it onto the engine dyno. So we used the chassis dyno shop that we regularly used up in Birmingham. and got the car on the dyno. Now this was like, uh, I don't know, Wednesday or Thursday. And the first race was Saturday. Got it on the dyno and here's the owner watching expectantly. And we've told him that his expectations, because he's waiting expectantly, uh, would be somewhere around 150 plus at the wheels. Now the car got about 40 pounds heavier uh, due to the supercharged engine weighing more, but uh, its power to weight ratio would still be up by about 40%. Well, we broke it in, or finished the break in rather, and uh, 
did the first pull. Now it was all hooked up to uh, exhaust gas analyzers and all this stuff, so we knew what was going on. Made a pull, 80 horsepower. Now bear in mind his 1293 unblown engine at the wheels made 103. So, where did we go from here? This was a bit of a panic. We started adjusting this, that, and the other, but nothing we could do would get us over this by 80 horsepower. And the engine sounded wicked. Well, Mike and I started tearing into the engine, and we'd been at the dyno shop about 6.30 in the morning, so it was now 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and we're still at 80 horsepower. Uh, and we got to the stage now where it was the head off, camshaft out, etc, etc, etc. We put all the engine back together again and got ready to make another pull. Now, um, because it had been torn down so long and all the water drained and cold water put in it, the engine was stone cold. So we put the starting plugs in it. And uh, that's a conventional uh, plug of a hotter heat range but conventional plug uh, compared with the race plug. The race plug had two round electrodes. One came up the middle of the plug like this and the other one which was the same diameter was drilled and put in the side so that you had a plug gap this way. Now our regular plug is like this. So anyway Started the engine up, sounded just as crisp, and uh, uh, we thought, well, here we go. Made a pull. Made about 135 horsepower. Woo! We didn't find anything wrong with it with that tear down. Um, and anyway, we're, we're going through it, and then I notice on the bench there's the race plugs. And I thought, whoa, let's put those in. We put those back in, made a pull. There it was, 80 horsepower. That engine did not like those race plugs. It sounded exactly the same. Did not like those race plugs. We got some conventional cold running plugs and put in the engine. Played around with plugs a bit. And by seven o'clock, we were making almost 170 horsepower at the wheels. All that extra power was from just the spark plugs, right? If we put the other plugs back in, that 170 horsepower dropped to about 80. I've never had a spark plug grade make that much difference. It was unbelievable. Why was it like that? I have no idea. But I tell you what I did like, he cleaned up the championship next year, absolutely no problem, right? I think we could have built him a 1480 and done the same without the blower on, but hey, he wanted that blown engine, and i got to say, it did go well. I mean, coming off the line, the big problem he had was trying not to have it go up in smoke. I mean, the car only weighed about 1,100 pounds, so with 170 horsepower at the wheels, it was like a Mustang with three times that power. That's uh, 300, three steps around. Uh, it was like a Mustang with 520 rear wheel horsepower. So I'm sure that will put it in perspective for you V8 owners. Okay, on to the next subject. That is carburation or fuel injection and mixture quality. Now then, after a lot of research on this over the years, it appears to me, and this is a calculation rather than a materially measured finding, that typically, on average, you need to have about 15% of the mixture at the intake port vaporized. That doesn't mean micro-atomized, it means vaporized or as good as. Now, when, when a fuel droplet gets below about 5 microns, or thereabouts, it's as good as vaporized, right? The surface area on the droplet 
versus the volume is so high that it absorbs heat so fast that it almost instantly vaporizes. Now, when I say almost instantly, you realize it doesn't have much time in an engine to vaporize. Right, so. When the Lortos were introduced into England, the no, let me backtrack there. We used a lot of Weber carburetors, but when the Lortos were introduced, we found that the booster, which was designed at the University of Madrid in Spain and kind of uh, paid for by the Lorto, had a far more effective booster than in the Weber carburetor. Now, I got to say, I learned a lot from that. Delorto booster design which stood me in good stead later on in life. Um, in fact I can say I, I learned as much from that Delorto booster as to win a couple of championships from what I learned. So anyway the thing is is that we tried a set of these um, uh, 45 Delortos versus 45 Webers on a 1600 Ford and sure enough the engine ran smoother, better, better brake specifics and things like this. We did this on Ocelli's Dyna, which is just outside of Oxford, right? Um, tried it on several engines, uh, ones with independent intake runners, IR system. Now, I thought, well, you know, we race a Mini, let's try it on a, a Mini. Didn't work. Next thing, now, this, I did this with Richard Atkins, Dick Atkins, my Formula One buddy from way back. Um, we tested a fuel injection system on it where we could alter pressure and nozzles and all this stuff. And we found that if you had a fine mixture, we lost power. And, and he said to me, he said, you know, Richard Longman, who at the time was the mini guy, he said, we tested uh, on... Uh, the same dyno a couple of weeks earlier where they put the nozzles into a Weber carburetor because the Weber made more horsepower than the Delorto but it had big droplets of fuel coming out we actually shot pictures of it because you could just look straight down the higher pressure and the finer the mixture was the less power the engine made and this was all with experts setting it up so it's not like a setup deal and uh, it didn't matter what we did, if you atomized that fuel too good for a mini engine, boom, power went down. And I'm not talking two or three horsepower, it was like 10. So we dropped from about 130 to 120 horsepower. Brake specifics were very good. It would run very nicely, but it didn't like those small droplets. Now, why? I have no idea. I've never been able to solve that problem. Why did they make more power? Now, you might say, what's all this got to do with a mystery V8? Because I alluded to that in the title. We'll get to that now. Okay, we're now at the point of looking into this mystery V8 should actually say the V8 mystery, right? And it concerns carburation. Let's go back to 2012, right? Um, that was the year that BLP did the great carburetor shootout. Well, actually they did it for two years, but when they moved a, a PRI from Florida to, to um, uh, Indiana, Prior to them running any competitions, one of the things that I told my readers, because I didn't have a YouTube channel then, was that if they wanted to be sure of getting a really good Holly carburetor, AED was probably the best in the country, right? And I got a few comments saying, you know, what does this guy know about carburetion? Well, I used to design carburetors for a living, right? So, But let's not. Over, uh, overlook the fact that I just might know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so I said AED is probably the best or one of the best carburetor shops in the country. Now that doesn't, 
I don't want to degrade the others because there are some fine carburetor shops in the US, right? I would have to say that if we were going to look at the carburation skills of your typical carburetor specialist here compared with the rest of the world, USA has got it. Number thumbs up one by a big margin. Now, what happened? Well, this guy here who doesn't know anything, according to anyone, is that the first carburetor shootout we had, there was, I think, eight awards that could be won. AD won seven of them, right? Um, so the conclusion is that maybe what I said two years before was actually accurate. Well, you know, I didn't come up with that just because I wanted to say it. I came up with that because I've dyno tested a bunch of carburetors and AED consistently come out on top, even if it is only by a small margin. But hey, that sounds like advertising, so we'll, we'll leave that. But here's the deal. As many of you will know, uh, regular viewers will know, I used to teach at uh, uh, University of North Carolina at Charlotte uh, in the uh, motorsports department. And um, one of the things that my students had to do to get uh, their little piece of paper saying, yeah, they're a competent race engine builder, is they had to build an engine which either made a certain target horsepower, which was set by me and very high, or they had to build an engine that won a race. Well, I had a couple of star pupils there, but the ones that I want to point out here was that um, one, Dusty Kennett, was um, uh, very much uh, addicted to engine building and performance. And the other thing was, he was a brain on two legs, right? I don't know what this guy's IQ was, is, right? We've remained good friends. But boy, I wish I had his IQ, right? It's got to be way beyond 150, right? Um, anyway, he, his target or the, the, the um, uh, project I gave him was he had to build a 350, 10 and a half to one, that had to make 550 horsepower and 455 foot-pounds of torque. Now, oh, and it has to run on pump gas. Right, so you can use 91 pump gas here. So, the thing is, is how we did this was, uh, I gave him a budget on a piece of paper, and I said, you all the parts you use can't go over that. Right, so I said, what I want you to do is go through um, uh, the target is doable on that budget. Go through all the parts that you need, right? Be as specific as possible, and I will arrange getting them. So, he did. And he built this 350. Right. Uh, total seal rings, um, uh, icon pistons, uh, stock crank, which he uh, radiused off stuff and things like that. Set of scat, six inch steel rods. Comp Cam's cam, which I had him spec out, right? That's his job. He had to spec it out. Uh, an EQ, a set of EQ heads, iron heads, which he ported. And I actually posted on the, the forum that I'm on, which is um, uh, Speed Talk, the flow figures. And I had several head porters say, no way. No way you can get this, right? Well, sorry, guys, but, but he did. And the dyno proved it. Right, oh, the dyno supported it. it, didn't prove it, but it supported the, the flow figures. Anyway, um, took the engine over to the dyno, and uh, uh, now what was the manifold on it? I think he had a, it might have been an Edelbrock uh, 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 Victor, but it also could have been uh, one from uh, performance products, right? They have a, one that's cast in China, 
Uh, it's a little bit different design, but we know how to make it work, right? It's one of those two manifolds. Uh, and the point was it didn't make much difference. The way we ported them, it, they were about the same. Um, and um, on that, it had an 850 AD carburetor. So anyway, we took it over to the dyno. The company is now closed down, but the guy was a cup car engine builder, a very successful one at that, right? Uh, I mean, the number of wins he's had in the upper echelons of NASCAR racing is, you'd need a toilet roll to write it down. So anyway, we marched into the dyno cell and on the way in, I remember he asked Dusty, how much power uh, do you expect it to make? And he says, 550, I'm gonna make 550. Um, now, he just told this guy what the spec of the engine was, and he turned and looked at Dusty. He said, you'll be lucky to make 500. Well, you know, I kind of knew it was going to go over 500, but I didn't say anything. Dusty looked a bit apprehensive. Anyway, he got the engine on the dyno, broke it in, and um, uh, the first pull we did was five, just shy of 530 horsepower. This guy was amazed. He says, wow, that's a build thing was he had to make 550. Well, after tweaking ignition and things like this, and our cup car guy had some really good moves for fine tuning, and we finally saw 553 horsepower and 470 foot pounds from this 350. And I remember this guy saying, that is incredible. Anyway, the thing was is I'd got from AED, a 1050 Dominator, right? And the the reason I had this is I wanted to, t it, it was intended for a big block, but I wanted to see how well it would work on a smaller engine. Well, I don't normally build 454 big blocks, right? I think the smallest I ever build is usually a 496. Yeah, because it's cheap to do and they work so much better. Not just proportionally better, but even more than that. Um, so, we decided to put on this 1050 Dominator. And one of the things that AED was good at was getting the Dominator to run over a wider RPM range. So, we put the carburetor on and... Uh, uh, made some pulls and jetting changes and every time we made a pull and a jetting change it got better we got up to 584 horsepower and that carburetor would pull from 2500 rpm we couldn't load the engine anymore right and i was so excited about that and i called uh, jay at um uh, at aed and i said hey we pulled it right down to 2500 and his comment was and it ran okay and i said i ran just as sweet as you please, right? And he says, I'd have never thought that. And I said, well, you must be better than you thought, right? And he says, I, I don't think so. I think we're pretty good, right? So anyway, I said, well, well, we'll just test it on another engine. But for what it's worth, we made 585 horsepower, 91 octane fuel, 10, 10, 10 and a half to one compression, etc., etc." He says, well, that's really good. Anyway, so we put the 850 back on and uh, uh, and the engine went in a race car. I can't remember exactly where, right? But a few weeks later, my cup car guy said, hey, I've got a, another 350 on the dyno. You want to test that um, uh, AED carburetor again? I'd like to see if it can repeat. So we put the carburetor on, and it did exactly as Jay said. It didn't work. Under 4,500 RPM, it's back backfired and all the things a too big a carburetor will do peak power fine right but it wasn't really that much better than uh, uh, the 950 that came off it great carburetors is holy 950s so tested on a few more engines we never got that same result again now why was it i've even put it on engines that are very similar spec guys a 1050 Dominator on a 350 cubic inch engine of about 550 horsepower otherwise 
is a very difficult thing to get to work. I've got to work once out of maybe 10 attempts, right? So that's the mystery. Why did it work on that one engine? Okay, folks, that brings us to the end of the line on this edition of Paratac 10. Before we go, though, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button, the share button, really the share button, and the notify uh, deal. Last of all, hit the thanks button and donate. Thank you for watching.